All right, score. So today I'm gonna to focus on centering. Just to show you how to kick that into center. That's like the number one step after wedging. <clears throat> little trick of the trade is if your clay is a little bit firm, you could always take it and you could just smash it down a little bit. And what that does is it starts to break apart those particles, those platelets, they're kind of stuck when they sit there for a long time. And so as soon as you hit it, you'll start to loosen them up a little bit. So you're gonna to wanna to get your clay. I always recommend if you're working straight out of a bag, always cut big chunks. Don't ever cut like bread slices. If you cut a little bread slice, guaranteed you're gonna have an S crack on the bottom. And the reason being is that this clay, even though it looks like one piece of clay, it's actually two pieces of clay because it was pugged out of an extruder. And that extruder has these blades in it and it, they're shaped kind of like an S. And so if you don't um, beat up the clay or just do a thin, thin slice, like to make a tile off the top, guaranteed it's gonna crack every single time. So it's really important to cut bigger pieces and then take those bigger pieces and cut those into other bigger pieces. At that point, you just kind of want to pat it together. <clears throat> if it's commercial clay, it's already de-wedged. So technically you don't even have to go to the wedging table and spend time wedging. You just have to knock these into the shape or the size, the weight that you want to be able to make your piece. So we're gonna go through a few different techniques that you could use. <clears throat> First off, it's all about body mechanics and being really, really strong. And so I have a really good chair. My legs are nice and wide. I'm always gonna be able to like tuck my arms in here and I'm using my hands together to create like a real stable force to push against the clay. And the clay is plastic. And so as the wheel's spinning, if I'm nice and centered and stable, the clay is gonna hit this edge. And if I just hold it there, anything that's uncentered or off that center is gonna get tucked into center eventually. And so it's all about stability for getting it centered. First off, you wanna get the clay on your wheel head and I'm using a bat here. Um, and so I'm gonna take it and I just roll this around until I get just a little bit of moisture on there. And what that does is that when I lift my hand up and I throw it down, that moisture is gonna catch and it's gonna stick and it's gonna hold. Some beginners, you see them, they do this move where they like smooth down a little bit of the clay to make sure that their clay is stuck on there. But I never do that, but some potters do. Some potters either even will push down this way to make sure that edge is really connected to the batter, to the wheel head. So that's the first thing. Water is your lubrication. That's what allows those platelets to slide nice and smooth through your hand. And so the first thing is, is that you want to get it centered, right? And so I'm gonna teach you three different ways to be able to center. The first way is I learned in high school, which is um, one of the reasons why I got into ceramics. I had an incredible instructor and he was so much fun. And then as soon as you touch clay, it's a whole different ball game. And uh, the process of working with the material and how it's immediately responsive and self-adhesive and you can create all sorts of different things. Um, was just magic to me and I fell in love with the process. He taught to center with your right hand at five o'clock, your left hand at 11 o'clock and you take your hands, you just kind of squeeze together. So I'm gonna get in there and I squeeze together and I hold that clay and you can see how I kicked it into center really quick. Knock it off center, it's dancing again, let's go to another technique. So in undergrad, undergrad I was trained by a nun, which was really interesting. And she was 85 years old and she weighed about the same, about 85 pounds. But she could throw these really big, voluptuous, beautiful pots. And how she would center is that she would take her hands and she would put them behind the pot. And then she would close her eyes and I swear she would say something to Jesus, hallelujah. And by leaning back, there we go, it's centered again. So it's the same idea. Instead of doing the force this way, I'm leaning back and I'm doing the force this way. Now, what's really fascinating is that when I went to grad school, I studied in Southern California, 
And of course, you know, if you're a graduate student, you know, it's like hyper intellectual and you got to overthink everything. And so this is spinning and there's centrifugal force. So if I'm using my hand on this right side, as that wheel's coming around, it's pushing this hand out, which means I need to muscle it a little bit more to kick it in. And so how they taught is that you use your left hand, you lock it right into your body. And as this wheel turns around, it hits right into your palm, which is connected to your body. And all, with one hand, you just lean in and you can get it centered. Very, very easy. I don't recommend using just one hand. I always recommend using two hands because it's gonna add to that stability to be able to get it centered. Once that's done, you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna start the collar and that's just moving the clay up. And then you're gonna find that pocket on one of your hands and you're gonna bring that pocket back down to get it back in the center. Easy peasy. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna lift this clay up. I'm gonna then push it back down and kick that into center. Some po folks like to use this technique where you use your left hand like this and they grab the thumb and they push down and they create, rather than a dome, they create something that they call a puck. And that's more of a puck kind of shape. So you gotta find out what works with you and your body mechanics. And what's really cool is that there's armless potters out there that throw with your feet. I would check it out because that could give you a little insight to the proper way to be able to center and then be able to throw a pot. Find out what works for you. You know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's your way. And it takes a lot of time to be able to develop that out. You don't always get it the very first time, but if you continue to push through and you're dedicated with the process, it happens naturally and you'll develop out your own signature style. So let's go ahead and let's throw a quick, um, plate everybody asks about plates in here and so you start with the centered puck and then I'm going to go ahead and use my sponge the white part of my hand and I'm just going to take this and squeeze while I'm coming down and then just pull right towards me there's my plate I'm all done now if I wanted to I could define this rim a little bit more I could go ahead and lift this rim up I could thin it out I could even use like a rib and these are called ribs, and there's all sorts of different shapes and sizes that you have. They're called ribs because they give volume and form to the clay, just like how our ribs give us a little volume. So I could take this now, and I could just fold over this rim into more of a classic kind of vessel. Always at the end, I teach to take the wooden knife just to clean up a little bit of that area under, underneath. And that gives a real nice space for your wire tool to fit underneath and I could pull this right through. Just now I'm noticing I left a little bit of water on there, so I'm gonna use my sponge and just lightly clean that up. If you want to, you could even give it some attitude, right? And so I can get in there and I could do some band marks. And band marks are really important when it comes to clay. All around the outside of a pot, you have this opportunity to express yourself. So what is that thing that's really important to you that you wanna write on here? maybe right on there, put here, or put there. I did four of them, so automatically I'm thinking about the directions, you know? I always like to do this thing called throwing and altar. And so then there's my vessel, a plate. Anyways, I hope you're having a great day. We'll see you soon.